Good morning, friends. I hope you and yours are safe and well. I've been saying that every weekday morning, 902 mornings in a row. And uh, sometimes I mean it a little bit more directly. So wherever you are, Bonnie's in Bristol, Virginia, it's Deborah's birthday. Happy birthday, Deborah. Wherever you are, friends, it is so good to be together. And when I say I hope yours are safe and well, I mean all of ours. I really hope that Linda, your friends in Rishon LeZion and in Ashkelon are safe and well. Lori, it's good to be with you in Arizona. Rabbi Cantorisa, so good to be with you. Um, how do we start? How do we start? We said the bracha, we just sang it for learning Torah, and that's what we do. We're going to ground ourselves, strengthen ourselves, be a community that is dedicated to eternal values in moments that are incredibly hard. Torah is meant to bring light, and I think we could use some light. So here's a little bit of Torah. I'm channeling it from a dear teacher of mine, Rabbi Matthew Berkowitz in Israel. This is Torah that I've shared in the past, but I never thought about applying it right now. So I want to give you the context and then quote Rabbi Berkowitz, uh, who's a wonderful artist. If you're looking for a beautiful Haggadah or some art, look up Matthew Berkowitz. You'll be happy. The Torah, which we begin again this week, we get to begin again this week. I'm letting that in. Let me say it for a third time and encourage us all to let it in. I'm even going to take a breath as I do it so I can feel it. We get to begin again this week. The Torah has a radical proposition because you would imagine that any book for a sacred people, by which I mean all people, but any sacred book, I would imagine, um, would begin with a defense of its people and to say, here we are, let's begin with our tribe. But the Torah's radical suggestion is the way it opens, which is that the God of Israel cares about the universe. We look at the way the Torah opens, and it's not about the Jews. In fact, the first bunch of stories up and down are not Jewish. We tell them our way. But the story of the creation of the universe, well, that's not uniquely ours. Nor is the, the first person earthling. We shouldn't give a gender to that first being of Adama. The word Adam, Adam, is wrong wrongly translated as man. It's not man, it's the first person. And in fact, commentators, including Rashi, suggest that that first person was at least two genders, probably all genders wrapped up in one, and only in the second chapter when the human being is um, divided one side from the other, not rib, but one side from the other, can there be the beginning of differentiation. It's not my point for today. But in the re-beginning of our story, we should notice that it's not actually focused on our story. This is not about the Jews. In fact, from Adam and Eve, and then to Noah, still no Jews. Only in two weeks, when my son celebrates his bar mitzvah, with Parsha Lech Lecha. only in two weeks do we start talking about a tribal story starting with family rose adam means the earthling adam adama earthling adama means earth you might be thinking of the word dam which means blood but adam is adama earth so with all of this recognition that our torah which could have begun in a tribal way actually begins in a universal way. Think about what this means for the way we are cultivating a consciousness. What does a Jewish 
approach to the universe look like based in Torah? It means every facet of the world is full of God's concern. Every human being is worthy of love and dignity because the image of God is a universal human truth. What a beautiful part of being Jewish. What a beautiful facet of Torah to know that lives are not differentiated by worth, by tribe. God is within all of us. The image of God is a universal human reality. Of course, my wounded heart has to say that terrorism can be defined by seeing an image of God as an object, as unworthy of care. And so though I am trying my best to stay grounded in Torah, that universal human dignity, a beautiful facet of Jewish theology, of Jewish consciousness, not only Jewish consciousness, but something I'm very proud of, we deserve that too. Our images of God deserve that too. And the number of losses is just, there's no word. So the loss of one person is the loss of a universe. We have lost 1,200 universes at least. And almost 200 universes babies are still being held captive. This universal concern that's in the Torah is something incredibly precious. And I stood last night with fellow rabbis and also sisters and brothers of faith, of different faiths, with whom I've traveled to Israel and traveled to the American South, rabbis with whom I've traveled to Ukraine and Poland, and we all stood together. And then at the very end, all of the clergy was invited up to the stage to sing Hatikva, Israel's national anthem, and I invited our sisters and brothers, faith leaders, to join us, and I stood in an unimagin unimaginable variety of images saying next to my dear friend Bishop Lee Trollinger singing Hatikva I mean he was humming this universal concern takes a turn I'm going back to the Torah message and then we'll offer some prayers it takes a turn when Rashi the most famous of all Jewish commentators on the text looks at God's creation of the universe in this week's Torah portion in Breshit and says, yes, and then I'm going to read you the Hebrew, Kol ha'aret shel ha'karosh baruch hu hi, the entire earth is the Holy Ones. Hu v'ra'a, God created it, un tanal asher yashar be'inav, and apportioned it to whoever God believed should have that portion of land. Birtsono netanalahem, it was God's will that these areas of earth be given to specific peoples. Urtsono nitalamehem untanalanu. It's a very strange thing for the most universal of biblical texts to then be commented on by one of the most famous of commentators who says, yes, God's concern is the whole earth. Each portion of it is apportioned to certain people. You would think, in a universal way, who would need borders or tribal identities? And the reason why we believe Rashi wrote what he did was because he was living at the end of his life during the Crusades. When in the name of a fundamentalist faith, warriors, calling themselves faithful, calling themselves Christian, slaughtered Muslims and Jews. And Rashi was challenging what they were doing 
from a place of faith in God. God is in charge and people have plots of land and no one should kill anyone in, la in their land, in their home. A universal text through the prism of personal and communal trauma can be less universal and we have to resist that impulse. We have to resist the impulse to respond only in trauma. So what I'm going to be focusing on is not what the verse originally meant, which is universalism and God's universal concern, and I'm not going to focus in the way Rabbi Berkowitz beautifully channels Rashi, but I'm going to quote Rabbi Berkowitz himself. Why does Rashi transform a universal moment of creation into a particular moment connected to Israel? It is because of the horrific times in which Rashi lived during the Crusades, in which Jews were powerless, persecuted, and exiled from their homeland. Rashi sought to remind his people that they have a home with a capital H. Friends, let me quote Rabbi Berkowitz, who's channeling Rashi, who's responding to his world and loves Torah. Jewish people have a home, my friends, capital H. And we will defend it. And we will bring our children home. I sang this yesterday and the day before, and I have a feeling I'll be singing it a lot. I'm very proud of the way we are all showing up. If you didn't see it already, I shared on my Facebook feed a photo of Israeli soldiers who were stranded in Central America, and we have helped. We played a part in chartering a flight from Lima, Peru, bringing them back to Israel so that they can serve our people and protect our people. May God protect them. May everything we do bring us one inch closer to justice and peace. This is Shomer Yisrael. God, please protect Israel. Wherever you are, I hope you'll sing with me. If anyone has the words, you can post them in the chat so everyone can see them. something I need to do first. I lie, lie.
Friends, I invite you before we go. Wherever you are, there's the Israeli flag on your screen, right behind me. Let's take a breath. Incline our hearts and souls to the east. Remember the Torah's message in this week that we can begin again. We can begin again. We're going to begin again. Kolon baleva penima nefesh Yehudi homia ulfate mizrach kadima ein letzion sofia. On lo avda tikvateinu Ha tikva bat shnot alpayim Liot am chovshi beyartseinu Eretz Zion virushalayim Liot am chovshi beyartseinu Eretz Zion virushalayim See you tomorrow, friends. Stay strong. Pray for peace.